we are back on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati. Lindsey Patterson, Mike Santagata. Mike, how are you? Cold. Yeah. Is it that's cold a, in Cincinnati? That's the thing about living in the Midwest over here. Um, you know, you, you get that false hope, that fake spring day where it's about 75 and sunny for two days straight. And then on a Monday, it's dreary. It's flurry, snow, cold. It's just never over until it's officially over. I know. I was covered covered in ice this morning. I had I had to thaw the car. I was like, unbelievable. I was so upset. It was like it was seventy last week at some point. Yeah. What's happening? That's where's that? Where's Where's Punxsutawney Phil? I need to have some words with him. I need to go find him. I think yeah. he's in Punxsutawney. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where he is, but I just know it's never going to be warm until we get into like May, M- more than more than a couple days. But you know, speaking of kind of this off season, how it's going? It's it's week two of free agency. The Cincinnati Bengals they made some moves last week. They said some goodbyes, and uh, we'll go ahead and start right now with uh, DJ Reader is the tough one. A uh, friend of the show, we were big fans of DJ Reader. Loved everything that he brought to the Cincinnati Bengals when it comes to uh, leadership on the field. He could stop the run. And, uh, you know, for the Cincinnati Bengals, it, for me, felt a little surprising when I saw what the Detroit Lions gave DJ Reader when it was guaranteed money. Because I thought for sure, I'm like, oh, it's probably going to be multi years and maybe it's three years, uh, two years more money. But the guaranteed was just around $9 million. And for the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm feeling, and and, and look, I hope DJ Reader stays healthy for the rest of his career and he never deals with another quad injury. Uh, he was absolutely wonderful here. But for me, I feel like the Bengals kind of had a, a minimal number and the injury is still a concern for them. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, we'll see. I Personally, I, I, I wouldn't have made that bet uh, that he won't get back to his level of play. He went through this injury three years ago, which, you know, he's older, so maybe you don't recover as fast. I don't know. But, yeah, what, all this cap space, and I, I don't know what they're doing with it <laughs> because I know people say, like, oh, but you can't just hand out all these deals. But look at the cap space, and I think you could have done this one. And especially there's low guaranteed money. You could get out of it if he is – too injured to compete you can get out of it next year so i'm not 100 sure but i wouldn't have made that move to let him go especially because they waited all throughout free agency mm-hmm. let every run stuffing defensive tackle nose tackle go trying to get this deal done and then it didn't get the deal done and then they bring in the only other nose tackle that's out there tear your tart and he walks out so what are you left with uh, radically changing the fronts and style of play, grabbing a guy, pigeonholing yourself to nose tackle round two, maybe round three in this draft. It, a lot of questions, a lot of questions uh, for me, but that's what they chose to do. And it's not like reader, it's not like reader uh, got a huge guaranteed deal and everything from the Lions. I think that is the one part. It's like, okay, so mm-hmm. the other teams weren't super comfortable with it either, I guess. But we'll see. I don't know. I know the idea that the Bengals know the most because that's where he's been doing his rehab and medical facilities is where he spent most of his time. But I also think the Bengals are very risk averse. They don't want to pay a guy that's 30 coming off injury. I think that to me is also a plausible explanation for why they were off on the money. When you look around the league and, you know, maybe the Cincinnati Bengals decide to go in a different direction and they don't have a true nose tackle because it really feels like they're not trying to panic. The options really aren't there. When you look at the draft, maybe one or two guys are going to be the possibility of being there for the Cincinnati Bengals, maybe in the first, maybe in the second round. Um, you know, to, to be determined on where they go with that, they had Tierra Tart in town. And according to Paul Deaner Jr., it sounds like, they will not be going that direction. He just wasn't a culture fit. Um, yeah. I, I thought for sure it would be maybe a money situation or not. A, he, he might, you know, be playing uh, with other teams, see, see if uh, he can get a better guaranteed somewhere else, maybe multi-year deal. And it really just sounds like maybe this is the Bengals decision to say, mm, no, not the option. He was in town on Friday. Um, they had Makai Becton in, obviously on the offensive line side, we'll get to those, you know, free agency visits later in the podcast, but for the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, 
is there an option you see or do you think they're just going to try to go a, a different route without a, a true nose tackle? I think the, mm, maybe not a true nose tackle. I do think they need to sign at least one more defensive tackle. It would be a plus if they can play nose. You could watch the Houston Texans, which I just watched 13 games of Sheldon Rankins, so I know how they play. They mm -hmm. don't really play true nose tackles. They made Rankins play at a inside the guard more often than I thought he should. Maybe that's the route the Bengals go. They just have B.J. Hill and Sheldon Rankins, and one of them is going to play like a two-eye, one-tech in some of these fronts. They're probably going to get away from their bare front, which is a zero head-up nose involved in that and two defensive tackles. It'll be tough. I I don't think – other than Tart, I don't see another guy that you go, yeah, that's a starter. I think they might just sign Tupo and go. And to me, that's a mistake. But, again, they're not doing everything that I would want them to do in this offseason. Not that, that they have to follow my plan or anything. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of questions for me. We'll see over the next couple of days, but we are down to – backup quality players i think if you're going to go sign it like montrevious adams i think might be available from the steelers but he was a backup and they got rid of him because he wasn't playing up to their standard so you're going to go get cast off to backups they haven't had a lot of luck with these late free agency pickups this is where you end up with some of your sydney jones types where you think like ah maybe that guy could play a role mm -hmm. and then they don't so we'll see yeah, we'll get to Sheldon Rankins in just a moment, but it really feels like with this defense, they're like, okay, you might be able to run on us when they were pretty bad last year with DJ Reader when it comes to stopping the run. But it feels like they're just, let's let's get better in the secondary, let's get better in the safety room, let's add Sheldon Rankins, who we'll get to his tape in our next segment, and we'll be able to stop the NFL when it comes to passing game. When you look around the league, a lot of teams are going to pass the ball. They want to pass the football. I know you can look over at the AFC North and they have Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, who you have to see two times a year. But for me, it just feels like the Cincinnati Bengals might go a different approach, like their plan B with this and having a little more pass rush and just worrying about stopping, you know, stopping the ball, stopping it in the air versus on the ground. Yeah, uh, they. I think you would say they have a better pass defense, but the run defense got worse on paper is how I would look at this. I mean, your safety room should be better. You got all those guys in there. I think it's a mismanagement of resources that they spend in the safety room, that you spend two pretty high picks, including a first-round pick, and then you still have to go out and sign two different players to come in and play. I don't know about that. Um, in the – but it should be better. And I think that corner room is the same corner room. So that's the same. Pass rush is better. I think the pass rush is better. I don't know how substantially, but it is better. Um, but, yeah, when you look at the run defense, it's like some people said, like, it, it can't get worse. It can. Mm -hmm. I think it was worse when Reader wasn't on the field. I think that's a big reason when he would leave the field and you had 95-68 out there, that would – give up some explosive runs. They're not playing up to even really a backup level, neither one of them. So got some concerns there. I think you can always get worse. I don't think we should ever say that this is the floor because that's when the floor drops out from underneath you and you fall down even further. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Ravens are going to be concerning with their run game. I think the Chiefs with their rebuilt run game, that's a little bit concerning. I mean, I'm thinking of that interior against – the non-reader Bengals in the middle of that defense, that doesn't seem good. So there's going to be a few hurdles along the way. Maybe they just do a complete schematic shift and it all works out that they're able to slow down the run game of everybody, but I have my concerns about it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, again, just a reminder right now, I know it, it doesn't look like there's a lot of options for the Cincinnati Bengals at the moment when it comes to nose tackle, but free agency is – kind of getting into the tier three-ish, four-ish type of players. And there's still some offensive linemen out there too when we talk about right tackle replacements. But we're going to get to more when it comes to the Cincinnati Bengals offseason next on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati.
We are back on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati. Sheldon Rankins finally signed his contract and his press conference, I'm not sure if you had a moment to watch it, was one of my favorites. A very honest guy talked about going against Alex Kappa. He questioned why Zach Taylor uh, left left him one-on-one with uh, his offensive line and just a lot of uh, that three-sack game. And he said he got on the bus and felt like he should have had six sacks against the Cincinnati Bengals. I am glad he plays for my favorite team right now. Uh, the guy sounds... I mean, obviously, yes, he can be fun in a press conference. What do you do on the football field? I'm excited about Sheldon Rankins. I know if people follow you on Twitter, they should be following you. Bengals underscore Sands. You can see a lot of breakdowns and highlights of Sheldon Rankins. When you went back to watch him, you know, what are some things that really stand out that's really going to help this Bengals defense? Uh, He's a very good pass rusher. I think it doesn't come from his athleticism, not that he's a bad athlete, but he's not a guy that just fired like, Obi-Joby kind of could just fire off the ball and get penetration and get into the backfield that way. He does win more often than not with his technique and there's some serious strength to him. He's got the rare ability to win through guys and then to the inside and outside. Plus he can bend a little bit from the outside when he gets that corner. So there's a lot to like as a pass rusher. One of the most devastating stutter bulls, that I've seen. I mean, he put Kevin Zeitler on his back. He did it to Kappa twice. He got Chris Lindstrom. No, he didn't get Lindstrom with the stutter bull, but he did get him uh, with a spin move. He got a really nice spin move. I mean, the bag of tricks that he has is awesome. And he should be able to provide quite a bit of pass rush juice. I don't know if it's always consistent. Some of that comes from they played him in the two eye alignment, which is just inside the guard. So you're going to get the slide when that happens because you're right next to the center. They're, that's the easy one. Um, some teams, like the Bengals, uh, they did the opposite of the Bengals. So like the Bengals slid away from Rankins to help Volson, their left guard, against Malik Collins. Some teams, like the Colts, slid to Rankins and then left Collins alone against Quentin Nelson because they like that matchup more. We're getting all those slides. It makes it difficult to produce, but I don't, even though I'm talking about him being a great pass rusher, I don't know if it'll be consistent game to game. Like every game he's able to beat this, you know, dominant force in the interior because that's not what it was. He had some clean wins against good players. He beat up a Wyatt Teller too, which was impressive. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, like all pro, pro bowl level guys that he's able to beat. Um, But then he doesn't, completely dominate a guy like Nate Herbig. He beats him a few times, but he doesn't He doesn't get the three-sack game against guys that were backups coming into that game. And that's interesting. So the consistency, and he's 30. So I'm not expecting things to just suddenly improve. He's going to take the big step. He's going to become consistent all the time. I think it's just who he is. He's just not overly consistent as a player. But I think when it comes to his high end, it's extremely high end pass rush ability because you need that to be able to beat all these really talented guards that he beat last season. When you think about some of these rookies and if they just double up on getting another defensive tackle, maybe it's not in free agency, or maybe they just get a depth piece in free agency. You have a guy like Sheldon Rankins, you have Trey Hendrickson. I want to see more out of Miles Murphy this year. I want to see him on the field because when he's out there, he he's productive. Sam Hubbard's obviously going to get his reps. You got guys like Joseph Asai, who this is a big contract year for him. I doubt he's a Bengal after this year because David Malgata is his agent. When you look at some of these rookies like Byron Murphy, the second or Johnny Newton, could you see him see them on this defensive line with that crew and just saying that that rotation is going to work? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the best fit right now for them would be Devondre Sweat, but you don't really do that in round one because he's 360 mm-hmm. pounds and probably won't play more than 500 snaps. So Devondre Sweat round two is currently what I think their best possibility to add to the rotation would be because when you add a Byron Murphy or a Johnny Newton, you're adding another guy that's got, some, that's got plenty of pass rush juice, but they're not the best run defender. And they have that already in Rankins and a little bit in Hill. Hill's a little bit more solid at everything, but they don't have like a great run defender on this on this front, other than maybe Sam Hubbard, who didn't really play up to that last season. And I know there was an injury at some point, but I think even before that, I was going a little bit of like mm, Sam Hubbard slowing down a tiny bit. We'll see. I'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt because of the injury that he's gonna be as good as he was, but that's really your only good run defender 
on this front, that's tough. It's just one end because Hendrickson's not that. Murphy's still young, not sure. And talk about Hill and Rankins. They're not great run defenders. Tupo, not a great run defender. He's not even on the team right now. So Zach Carter, not a great run defender. It's tough. You look across that and you go, ooh, we don't have a – we have one possible plus run defender. And whether it was injury or not, he didn't look like it last season. So – that would be my big concern. That's why I kind of like Tavondre Sweat in this scenario where you're going to get one. He can play a lot of nose, so you don't have to change all your fronts and your scheme and whatever else. You plop him into DJ Reader's spot. You're not going to get 100% of DJ Reader's production, but you should get at least a solid starting level nose tackle, I would think, from what I saw. And now you can just continue to play that way, and that'll free them the two – Hill and Rankins up a little bit more on the interior because he should be taking on double teams. He should be taking away the A gaps while they can play the B gaps. That would be my best fit, but he's not the best player of those three. I think Johnny Newton's the best player of those three. So maybe you just go with him because Rankins is a two year deal anyway. So maybe you just yeah. go that. Or BJ Hill, does he have, does he have two more years on his deal? I want to say that he does. I know that they there, you know, there was talk, obviously, if they brought DJ Reader back, what do you do with BJ Hill? Uh, Cause he's making a lot of money and that defensive line, there's a lot of money going into it. Obviously you, you could get younger. If you get a guy like Johnny Newton in this draft, you have a guy like Miles Murphy, who's going to end up getting more reps every year and, and Trey Hendrickson, um, you know, if, unless they keep extending him a year after year, we'll, we'll see what happens there. There's no end date right now uh, with the way that they, you know, surprise a lot of people with some of those one year extensions. And, and maybe we'll see that more with other pieces on the Cincinnati Bengals team, but just the defensive line alone. Yeah. I mean, there's concerns. Um, you know, I want to see what the Cincinnati Bengals decide to do when it comes to free agents. It just doesn't feel like there's anybody out there that's going to be a quality guy. And, and maybe they had interest in some of the other guys who were off the board, but they were in discussions with DJ reader and they still wanted to stay in those and maybe they stayed on it a little too long if they had a number i just was really surprised with how it all happened uh almost uh, a little over a week a little a little less than a week ago when the cincinnati Bengals made that move with sheldon rankins um and dj yeah. dj reader moved on dj hill this is his last year of his deal he doesn't have another year after this so you do kind of have that need of like you could see them drafting a johnny newton or a byron murphy even if this year it's not a perfect fit because bj hill might be gone Next season and the season after that, you have nobody. Um, but one more thing with Rankins, just to quickly yeah. go over and finish this. I think he's really good at sniffing out screens. I have like six different clips across those games where he sniffed out the screen and made the play or at least was got in position to make the play. He misses some tackles, misses plenty of tackles. I think that's something that some defensive tackles just, just happens to them. Um, as a run defender, it's interesting because he's not really good against doubles, although he does an okay job of keeping his linebackers clean. He just doesn't hold – he doesn't have a great anchor against those, which makes sense. He's a little undersized. Um, when he's taking on solo blocks and stuff, it seems like he reads it well and he can do a pretty good job against – anytime the defense is trying to just block him one-on-one. -on -one. I think the run defense grade, because people have talked about that, PFF run defense grade, I think it gets lowered a little bit. I think you double count those missed tackles. I'm not 100% sure. PFF guy could tell me I'm wrong. But otherwise, I don't see why it's so low, because he wasn't a terrible run defender. He just was an okay run defender that missed tackles, to me, from when I watched. Bad against doubles, pretty good when he was soloed up. Beat Chris Lindstrom on a wide zone. That's Chris Lindstrom's bread and butter. So that was a all pro last season and the season before. So th there's plenty that's okay in this run game. And then you add in the screen ability that he's able to sniff those out really well. And then he also, despite being a pass rush specialist a little bit, does a good job of not getting trapped because Chris Jones even can get whammed and trap blocked. It, I didn't see the Sheldon Rankins get wham or trap block and knocked out of his gap at all. It seemed like he always knew what was coming. It feels like he has a good sense of when the offensive line is letting him through versus when he won, which I think leads itself to the screens and the trap blocks that he's able to read out. And if I were to guess, you probably have a Sheldon Rankins story coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully tomorrow. Uh, well, I guess today, but we will see. Yeah, make sure you guys check that out. Obviously, uh, as I mentioned, make sure you're following Mike over on Twitter, Bengals underscore Sands. He has a great breakdown, a lot of clips of the Bengals' new defensive tackle and Sheldon Rankins. More next.
a weekend for agency for the Cincinnati Bengals. We're going to grade where they're at at this very moment on it's always game day in Cincinnati. We are back on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati. I'm going to have a disclaimer. I've been having them on the last few podcasts. We are recording on a Monday night because if you look back to last week, on Monday night, the Bengals made the running back move. They cut Joe Mixon. They added Zach Moss. On Wednesday, about five minutes after we stopped recording, they signed Sheldon Rankins. The Cincinnati yeah. Bengals front office likes to move at night. And I'm, I'm just saying right now, they are looking for a right tackle. You could say they could use another cornerback. I know how Mike feels about adding to the secondary. And We've then, added enough. That's how I feel. <laughs> and then they could add a nose tackle. So we'll see what happens. But for the Cincinnati Bengals, um, I know there are rumors and, you know, and I, no Ian Rapp reports or Adam Schefters are out there reporting it. But it does sound like the Cincinnati Bengals do have interest interest and uh trent brown as the right tackle so we'll see if there's there's any more to that um you know there's a lot of visits happening with some of these free agents so maybe they'll have more free agent visits with some of these offensive linemen they do need a right tackle i don't think that they're going to go into this draft saying we feel 100 percent about our right tackle if they pick one up in free agency but i do think that they will get one um, it might be a one-year, get-out-in-two-year deal, but um, I think it's extremely important that you go in and you are the Cincinnati Bengals and you can go best player available at pick 18. But to be determined, still plenty of time left. As I mentioned before, Tier Tart, according to Paul Daner over on his podcast, The Growler, he had said this afternoon, it sounds like they will probably be going in a different direction as of Monday because just not a culture fit with him and he visited the team last Friday. Uh, Beckton still a possibility. I don't think that's off the table. He might be putting some feelers out for other teams to see if there's more money on the table or another option if, if he's a left tackle or, or a right tackle to be determined. But as of now, that's where the Cincinnati Bengals sit. There are a few holes, as we've already mentioned, when it comes to nose tackle, right tackle. Uh, no more, no more secondary pieces, but maybe one more. Uh, but for the Cincinnati Bengals, they've added some external pieces. You look at the running back room, Zach Moss, Geno Stone as the safety. Von Bell returned, and I'm starting to change my tune where I'm thinking Von Bell isn't going to be the Michael Thomas safety type. I think this guy is yeah. going to get a lot of uh, lot of starter snaps in the safety room, and, and that could be good, that could be bad. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And by bad, I don't mean it because of Von Bell. It's more because your resource and Dax Hill is your first-round pick. Um, you know, will he – what is what's it going to look like for him? We do not know. Uh, the tight end room, I, I feel a little bit better. To we'll, we'll see. Mike Gusecki, uh, he came in last week, said Cincinnati. Of course, you know when you sign a contract, you're going to talk the city up. You're going to talk the team up. And he said it was his his number one choice as soon as the season ended that he wanted to be with the Cincinnati Bengals. Probably going to be playing with the best quarterback that he that he has played it with in his NFL career. Um, they bring in Tanner Hudson, Trenton Irwin. Uh, so far, the pieces have, they've been okay. There's still a few holes, but but I've been I've been fine with free agency right now. Outside of obviously saying goodbye to DJ Reader, that it might be the only surprise. But I don't think we would have been surprised if DJ Reader would have been healthy going into the offseason because I thought that they weren't that he probably wouldn't come back if it would have been a healthy DJ Reader when he was injured. I was like, well, there is kind of a possibility that they could probably bring DJ Reader back. Um, but unfortunately, that didn't work out. And we do have a little bit of news of Trent Brown. He is actually scheduled to visit Cincinnati tonight. Oh, there it is. So he'll probably end up signing tonight. Um, yeah. Ugh. You're better in the safety room. We've talked about that. I do think I have some questions about what is this plan with the first and third round pick. I think we might have an idea of what their plan is the first round pick. But what is the plan with Jordan Battle? What is the, the Jordan Battle? Because he came in and played really well as a rookie. So I don't want him relegated to third safety because, in my opinion, I don't see – I think there will be a lot of hype about it. I don't see Luis Rumo just deploying three safety sets nonstop this season because I thought he would do that when Daxel was drafted. So I've been moved off of that when he didn't do it then. And he, it's been overstated how much he does it in general. It's maybe – five, 10 I think 10% of snaps, maybe because it's only third and really long, but he'll do it. Uh, so I don't want to see Jordan battle relegated to that role. I didn't want to see Dex Hill relegated to the Trey flowers role, but we are where we are. I grading. It's tough because I don't think it's a finished job yet. Yeah. It's hard. Um, yeah where it stands right now. Yeah. You're better at the safety room. You're same in the corner room. 
You're same in the linebacker room. You're worse in the defensive line room, in my opinion. Um, and then offensive, because really the only thing you did was add Rankins and lose readers. So if you're going to claim that they're better in the defensive line room, I think that is saying that you think Rankins is better than Reader. And I've watched a lot of tape of both. I, I think Reader's better at his job. I think Rankins is really good, though. So I don't think it's a huge drop off, but that is where I stand on that is just. I think Reader was playing at an all pro level. And uh, I think Rankins is more of a very fun high end starter. Your offensive line's worse, obviously. Your right tackles, there is none. Your right tackle at this moment is a battle between Cody Ford, Jackson Carmen, and Deontay Smith. That's your, they'll sign somebody. No, though. you can't you can't put Joe Burrow out there at all. Um, <laughs> nope. Nope. It, it will never actually be it, but that is where it stands at the moment. Your wide receiver room is probably worse because Tyler Boyd's out. Where you slotting Gasicki in your mind is interesting. Do you put him in the tight end room? Because then your tight end room might be better. But maybe you slot him into the slot receiver role there. And then you're thinking that maybe he's a little bit of a step down from Tyler Boyd. Does different things. I think that's interesting about what he can do. Make contested catches, jump jump balls, etc. But then the tight end room's the same. Um, running back room, I'm calling it the same. I don't yeah. think – yeah. I. I think it's similar. Quarterback's obviously the same. So we say all that. I feel like I'm like a, a C. I, I don't know. I got to see what they do. Right tackle. I'm interested in Trent Brown. Trent Brown, the interview here will be big because there's no question about Trent Brown's ability to play. I think he could play at a high level, and he has every time he's been healthy. Your big questions are, one, your motivation off the field, and your he's had weight clauses to try mm-hmm. to keep him under 400 pounds. Um, just, you know, get him working out, keep him that way. He can be a little lighter on his joints. Never a good thing though, to have those in your contract because that is an off field concern. They skipped Dewan Jones for the exact same thing. So there's that. There's also the health concern, which is kind of tied into that a little bit, but also not, can he stay healthy? Cause he hasn't stayed healthy very often outside of new England. He wasn't as motivated when he was with the Raiders. So you a lot of talk about this all the time, and it's true. Guys leave New England, play worse, go back to New England, play good again, and then leave and play worse. So you're hoping you don't get that situation either. But Trent Brown plays a ton of right tackle. He f- slots right in. I think he's a better pass blocker than he's a run blocker. I think he's a really good pass blocker, especially, you know, think of that size and length. He's bigger than Orlando Brown, <laughs> which is crazy. That's insane. Yeah but he's larger than him. Um, Trent Brown is interesting. I think if he signs, let's call it, I think the projection is like one year, $7 million type thing. Done. He's not going to play to that contract. Whether that is, he is playing well above that contract because he is a much better player than a one year, $7 million contract, his talent level, or he's playing under that because he's injured and not motivated. And you're actually just throwing out whatever the backup right tackle is a majority of the time. One of those two. I don't think you'll go one year, seven million. And he played just right to that contract, kind of like you might think with like Ted Karras or Alex Adler. Yeah, they're playing right to their contract. I think with Trent Brown, you go like that contract is either a steal or that didn't work out, um, which will be interesting. But this is why it's big. The meeting, the meeting itself is big with a big man to see just how they feel. Because that's also, I think, what happened with Tyre Tart, where whatever you signed T.R. Tart to, it, he probably wasn't going to play that contract. Is he going to be better than that contract or worse than that contract? And they determined that the risk was too high and that he might play worse than that contract. Similar idea here too, because after Trent Brown, Yash Nyman just signed with the Panthers. I don't know what the next man down would be unless they just go back to Beckton. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, obviously they have interest, but the Bengals, you know, they let him leave town without a mm-hmm. deal. And normally those Jeff Ruby dinners are closers. And um, they weren't yet. And and look, there, there could be more behind the scenes that, that they feel with Becton or Becton could say, hey, I think I can get more money somewhere else and I want to play left tackle. So I'm going to see what happens. I do not know. Um, just off of what Paul Daner had said about Tart, it just does sound like that they're going to move in a different direction for that. But for the Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, goodness, you're going to want to bring in another defensive tackle. You're going to want to get a right tackle in free agency because they want to go into this draft at 18. They have 10 picks. I don't think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to use all 10 of their picks. I think it would be extremely smart to move up in the second or third round 
you might see a defensive tackle there. If they end up going right tackle or tackle in the first round, there could be a wide receiver there and they feel good about a wide receiver. I think they're going to get a tight end on day two or three. Um, you, you could look at the running back room. I don't think it's finished. I could see a rookie running back and just doing the running back by committee with three running backs going into this offense. Um, all of that stuff is a possibility, and you want that to happen. You want to be sitting there at 18 and saying, you know what? Our guys here, there's pretty there's an opportunity. We might even move back a couple spots. Um, I, I just I think that they're gonna they're gonna move around a little bit in the draft. And you don't want to go in and say you have to get a right tackle, which I think that they're going to get a tackle in the first round. I think it would be smart to get a tackle in the first round. I love the Brock Bowers dream and everything like that. But at the end of the day, I want Joe Burrow to be protected and you have to finally get that tackle right. And there's one thing I, I do want to add. And I've always kind of heard that Frank Pollock has really never been able to make the decisions when it comes to these offense alignment. It could be free agency. It could be the NFL draft. And, and, and just allow him, the guy who's working with these offensive linemen, if that is true, to make these decisions. And, and maybe they're allowing Frank Pollock to have more input when it comes to some of these free agents or on draft day where they've struggled drafting tackles. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But in a perfect world, I would say, and, and, and we'll wrap up what I, what I want to grade them, bring in Trent Brown, Dalton Risner. I mean, yeah, that'd be cool. They're not bringing in Dalton Risner. I know, I know, but they have the money. They have the money to do anything. They, they just have haven't. The money. They've they had the money. To, they have the money to sign Reader. They have the money to sign any of these guys. They just haven't. Oh, they remind me when I want to be cheap, but they're not. And I won't say the Bengals. The Bengals front office aren't. They're not cheap. But it reminds me when I'm just like, oh, I have, I, 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 this extra uh, money. I want to be cheap with it, and they're not spending it. And I just, I don't know. I don't get it. Because people have talked about like. Why haven't they restructured Orlando Brown's contract to free up the? They don't have because to. they don't need it. They don't need it. And they're Imagine, so going to a... Imagine going to Orlando Brown and saying, "You know what? We want to restructure your contract." And he'd be like, "Last time I saw, there was a graphic. You're like one of the top five teams with cap space left. What do you need from me?" Exactly. Um, so no, I, none of that's going to happen. None of it needs to happen. Um, obviously, getting you can get Evan McPherson done this off season. That would be huge. I don't think Jamar Chase gets done until next year. Uh, but yeah, I just, I don't know the Cincinnati Bengals. I, 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 I true. I, I believe the front office they're doing fine right now. We might look back at that DJ reader situation and, and, and say that was a huge missed opportunity for them. Um, and he ends up working out and living off the contract with Detroit. Uh, and I hope he does. I hope he does. I feel like it is either way though, because they waited and didn't sign any defensive tackles thinking they'd get them. So then you miss out on Shelby Harris. You miss out on yeah. all these different defensive tackle options that could have taken that role as well because you thought, oh, well, maybe we can get him for cheap. But then he's going to take a while because he's injured. And then you don't get him. And now you're kind of left with, oh, everybody else signed. And then the one guy we put all our egg, eggs in this basket, he didn't sign here. But it's just, for me, it, and it does look that way. It, it really does. But for me, since the number was so low with Detroit, the Bengals could have matched that, and they didn't. Yeah. I yeah. just, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was, and they, if they were at that off, they should have just signed somebody else at the start. Exactly, exactly. Because DJ Reader's in the building; they see him every day. Um, yeah. not anymore. He's probably going to Detroit's building. But um, but that's uh okay. So my grade, you you give him a C. Sure. I'm like C plus borderline B minus because I couldn't be a teacher. I would, I would give in, I would give extra bonus points because I would feel good about this room or this position group for me personally. That's where I'm at. I'll go like a C plus. I'm kind of cheating B minus. There's still opportunity for them to get an A though for me. What about you? No. Are you like, no, it's not possible. Are you in the, I, can you get a B? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Ugh. Because they need to add a defensive tackle. I don't know who's out there. Maybe if they sign Kalias Campbell to a one-year deal, break their mold Do it. they've been doing, and then you go get Trent Brown or whoever, and I'm sold on that part of this, then I could be kind of persuaded, oh, if they sign Dalton Rister, yeah, I'm up to a B at least. If they I, don't sign think I, I don't think I can get to an A, though. I just – I think it's too late. I, I, I agree. I, maybe I'm being too nice that it, there's anywhere that they can get like even an A minus. But yeah, I'd probably be like a B minus, C plus as of now. There's still an opportunity to add a right tackle. 
um, you know, add another defensive tackle. I wouldn't be against a left guard. I actually, uh, Kevin Zeitler just signed with the Lions, and I, I know there probably wouldn't be a reunion, but, man, I still thought he was playing quality football. And bring him in. Bring him back home. But, unfortunately, he's going to Detroit. But, yeah, that's where we stand right now. Uh, to be determined, as I said before in the podcast, uh, Adam Schefter reporting Trent Brown as of Monday night is flying to Cincinnati to meet with the Bengals tonight uh, to be determined on how those conversations go. I know Jeff Ruby's does close in a couple hours, so they're probably not going to dinner. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll see if there's any dinner notifications and meetings for the Cincinnati Bengals and uh, Frank Pollock and, and Joe Burrow. Make sure you're following along over on Twitter, Bengals underscore Sands. You can follow me at Ellen Diaz Patterson. Mike has a great piece coming out about Sheldon Rankins. So check that out over on All Bengals. And thank you for listening, too. It's always game day in Cincinnati.